line here as well. Failure catalyzes change, and if you don't want that catalyst to sweep you away, you've got to make sure that you're not one of the reasons that people look to when they question why did things fall apart here. Yeah, you, you want to be that bright spot, and you also still want to show that you can be a team player, that you can play for the team. Do not become a KDA player just because uh, the season you know, is kind of on that precipice. But either way, there is still a mathematical possibility that you can make it in the playoffs. If you win out and some of the teams that you need to lose out, then you have a shot of getting in. But it's going to be a tough one for either team. But it is a point of pride, you know, especially for Golden Guardians. You don't want to put up a donut in the second half. Too. Absolutely not. No wins would not be a good look. We'll see if they can find the win here today against Clutch. Taking a look at the bands, it's Tom Kench, Gangplank, and that newly reworked Akali banned out by the Golden Guardians. Clutch Gaming will remove Aatrox and Zoe from the pool with one band still left to go, and they'll put that one into Kindred. And Nocturne available, so that, that it would be a pretty big priority pick. We have seen contracts play that in the past, and that is what I would expect them to go with. They are going to lock that in. Pretty easy first pick, I think. Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's it's not up very often, but when it is, uh, it is usually grabbed up immediately. And your opponents don't have Kindred to pick into it. A lot of times, I feel like when we do see the Nocturne, you'll see kind of the handshake. other side just for fun. Yeah, you take Nocturne. All right, we'll take Kindred. Sure enough, we'll trade it off. It's fine. But with the Kindred banned out by Clutch, they don't have the ability to respond with that. Instead, they'll pick up the Braum for themselves. And it looks like the Trundle they're also thinking about there for the jungle. Might switch over to the Lee Sin instead. All right, forget it. We're just going to hover over quite a few different things. <laughs> yeah, it could, could be Trundle. It's, it's interesting because I think if you're picking Trundle, then you're you're kind of assuming that Lorlo or someone is going to play a tank that is going to be uh, juicy to alt. I don't really think that the Nocturne into, into Trundle matchup is particularly good for the side of the Trundle in that actual 1v1, especially if the Nocturne is going for lethal tempo. You really can uh, have some very strong dueling power there against the Trundle. But Trundle is always a solid pick. It is always a stable pick. It's going to have teamfight utility and dissuades your opponents from being able to go towards those tanks. Golden Guardians now. What are you going to go for here? Zaya locked in already. Rakan, a very likely teammate to go along with her. Turns out when two champions have hardwired bonus synergies with each other, they're a pretty good duo. <laughs> they really are. I mean, Rakan is just insane, even on his own. When paired up with Zaya, looking very, very good. Ezreal, perhaps, the, the lock-in here. I was expecting more of a Varus, honestly. Uh, Varus Braum has been such a popular kind of a duo there in the bottom lane. Uh, would make some sense to actually secure yourself a very powerful bottom lane to deal with that Zyra Khan. You don't want to be getting bullied. I feel like when you go the Ezreal, you're accepting you're losing lane, and you're just saying, let's mitigate how much we're going to lose the lane by, and that's always why I kind of am not a big fan of the Ezreal pick. Yes, you can scale up and take over in team fights, but you know, really, when is the last time you saw an Ezreal winning the lane in the NALCS? At one point, it's it had lost 13 minute. straight games, and, and then you're just accepting, okay, we're going to play from behind, right? Uh, and that that is a reasonable option, but you know we'll see because they also are, are taking into consideration that if you go for something like a Varus, you are very vulnerable to the Nocturne. So right. you know there's a lot of kind of things that are being taken into consideration. And especially with Nocturne, it's one of those champions that either flies into the back, deletes someone instantly, and you're just running around thinking, how do we keep our AD carry alive? Or if you can stop that instant burst. What do you have? You have a squishy ghost in the middle of your team, and all of a sudden everybody's got a Ghostbuster backpack on just ready to get rid of him. Uh, yeah, you turn from something terrifying into someone running with a bed sheet over their head. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, not so scary doing, anymore. What are you doing? You're embarrassing man. yourself. Stop it. Well, LeBlanc, Rise, and Syndra are all going to be banned away during the second phase of the bans. It is mid lane hunting season for both of these teams as they take everything out of the pool. Dr. Mundo will be the final ban here. Golden Guardians wanting to keep that one away from Solo. Yeah, I think the final ban makes a lot of sense if you're expecting Solo to be the one who is blind picked here. Uh, the Mundo is fantastic blind pick. Clutch traditionally have been going more for the last pick for Fevivin and trying to get him the preferential matchup. They could mix that up, of course, and looks like they will now. Oriana coming through. This is very much a focus on team fight. This is very much a focus so far on 5v5. We'll see if the pick from Solo does change that up. If Nara is locked in here for Lorlo, uh, certainly not any amazing targets for the Trundle to be ultimating, but we're gonna have to find out. And you know, if he does go for that Nar. Really, the only counters are ones where you play very aggressively into it. Things like Camille can answer that. Things yeah. like Jace. Uh, I actually think Quinn is a very good matchup into Nar. York is another very, very good matchup into Nar. But again, these are things that are risky, and you have to play aggressively. And this is a situation in which we have seen North American teams time and time again, and they're like, okay, well, 
we have last pick, but I guess I'm just playing Orn and losing the lane, you know, and that, that would yeah. be disappointing to see Clutch go for that. Especially if you've already drafted Ezreal in the bottom lane to say, all right, we'll just play this yep. and lose the lane. You don't want to take lane, two out of three of your lane, lanes. Lose, like, you know, Orianna is not a dominant laner, right? So if, if they She's do a go solid for a tank laner. here, yeah, but if you go for a tank here, I think you're, you're drafting three losing lanes from the side of Clutch, and then you're basically saying, well, I sure hope we can get to late game and beat you there, and we're going to find out if that is the option. Wouldn't be surprised to see Cho'Gath or something, but okay, this I like there we much go. more. There we go. This gives you an avenue of attack. Right now, you are playing an aggressive side lane matchup, which can get ahead. You can bring in the Trundle. You can actually, if you time it right, pillar the Gnar out of his jump. If you successfully do that, you can also hookshot off of the Trundle Pillar and use that to actually set up your stun so the Nar doesn't have to be near the wall anymore to be getting hit with that hookshot stun. So uh, these are some nice combos. I think that is the clear focus of attack there for Clutch. They need to be going top lane because I don't think you can really uh, get too much done against some of these other lanes, but we'll see if they are going to be able to pull it off. At the same time, man, if you're Clutch Gaming and you're bottom lane, and you're looking at the clock, and the Nocturne and the Talia are level six. Yep. You better brace yourself. It's dive o'clock in the bot lane. there are going to be some bad, bad things heading your way. Talia and Nocturne is just that recipe for everybody going to one place yep. and turning it into a party. Yeah, and the tough thing is, in that situation, if your team is not there to back you up, the best option becomes, all right, we'll just back off. But then if you just back off, you're giving up the turret to a four-man push, right? And, yeah. and that is tough, but you have to say, all right, we drafted around this. We are expected to maybe lose on the bottom side of the map, but if Camille slams top, if we can you know, get advantages up there, if Orianna can scale up, our team fight in the 5v5 is going to be very powerful. So that is really what Clutch is looking for, and that has been the name of the game for them throughout most of the season. Go late, depend on their scaling, try to take over there. All right, we're loading into Summoner's Rift for the second time today. Remember, this is do or die. You lose this, you can't go to playoffs. Your postseason is done. And Golden Guardians say, hey, if it's all about making an impact in the big games, making it count, mm -hmm. why not rock four out of five of the Samsung Galaxy skins <laughs> from last year's World Champs? All they're missing is the jungler, but Contracts honestly came about as close as he could with the color synergy. He's got the yep. spooky knock. And they stole there. the Ezreal. That was the Ezreal jungle. Ah! Clutch gaming, stop the full Oh, five he doesn't have the Samsung. He could. That would have been funny. It would have been the a traitor in the there. The betrayer. Maybe. Exactly. Yeah. Golden Team Guardians swap. waiting down here, though. They know that the Ezreal's going to fire some Mystic shots into that tri brush, so they'll just place their own ward down there and just wait. I like this strategy, though, from Golden Guardians. They're like, if we pick all the world championship skins, they can't be, they were they can't be bad, the right? The world champions. These guys were the best in the world. It had to be about the champions. This comp works. We're looking good. We're feeling good. Let's see if they can make it happen, though. This is a team that we've praised previously for innovating and doing better this season than they did, or doing better, it's seemingly, this split than they did last split, especially during the first round robin, right? We talked about how the second round robin's been a little bit rough for this squad, but when you look at that first round robin, they went five and four. Yeah, I mean, they, they were actually doing quite well, and Clutch looking for an invade here. Uh, but definitely an extremely disappointing second half when you take in consideration how good the first half was. Clutch, I think they just want the red buff. They're going to go in four-man here. I think they're confident in their level one. Braum gives you such a big advantage in those level one fights. But Golden Guardians could just try to stick around and poke them off with this Talia. It looks like that is going to be the option for now, definitely even coming back. So who gets this is, is actually a really big deal. Trundle gets a smite. He can level pillar and go for a kill. That goes in, finds a knockup onto Lyra. Ignite also going to be thrown down to force him away. The red buff resetting and Lyra being only at 200 HP. Oh this is going to turn pretty sketchy. We have gone into quite a fight at level one here so far. Zale, and it's not stopping anytime soon. The top laners are actually playing League of Legends. Everyone else is doing a weird the only mini thing you game need to turn this into a scrim is the, is the top laners have to TP down. <laughs> <laughs> if the top laner is TP, this is officially a scrim. All right, it's still going. <laughs> Mickey's at 200 HP. Everybody's still sticking around. Lyra went mid lane to push. He's coming yeah, back to Lyra's, the red buff. Let's go, baby. Lyra, as the jungler, has decided to leave the jungle and lane, while Mickey is trying to still hang out here in the jungle. Matt jumps himself away. Yep, he's he's down onto him. The reset. The, the monster again loses <laughs> its patience as Mickey's going to be taken low. Lyra has to hobble himself away from this one. Hot wall below 100 HP. Contracts want the damage, but they found it anyway through Deathly. Matt now taken down to 100 as oh, well. No. It's three kills for the Golden Guardians. <laughs>
It's three minutes into the game and they finally left the red buff. It's still alive. Uh, you really hate to see it. <laughs> this is where you're like, <laughs> we can restart, right? We can, we can do that again. <laughs> Redo, anyone? Remake. Yeah, definitely gonna get first blood. Gonna get another kill here as well. Flashes forward, one kill. He's gonna take down Lyra as well. Apollo also going down. I mean, this is this is about as bad as it gets, Flower. One, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> Two, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Golden Guardian. Solo's just up in the Happy top side. He's like, guys, you okay down there? What's happening? <laughs> what is going? This is where, as the top laner, you throw some question mark things <laughs> down into the enemy jungle and just go back to laning and hope for the best. Guys, I'm winning lane. What's happening? All right, well, top lane is pretty fine. Top lane is super neutral compared to everything else that we've seen so far in this game just three minutes in. Yeah, I mean, you love you love the buys here in the bottom lane. Apollo is like, all right, I'm going to get a mana crystal. It definitely has two long swords, so that's that's feeling nice. <laughs> a mana crystal and a Doran shield, which is zero damage put together. Yep. I think I've got the math right on that that's one. That's true. Versus the, the Zaya for Deathly. Doran's blade gives eight. The long swords each give ten. That's yeah. A lot of damage. Yeah, he's going to be hitting pretty hard with those feathers. Mickey in the mid lane, though. Can he get himself away from this pillar? Does still have a flash available. Doesn't even need to use it, though. Will take a little bit of extra damage from the ball there at the end. But he's just fine. All right, so everything calming down a little bit. We can kind of take stock of the situation. I would hope so. It is it is just still, you know, five 600 gold lead, so it's not as extreme as you may have expected coming out of that. Uh, and Clutch still certainly are going to have their opportunities. Obviously, a, a huge advantage now on the bottom side of the map, and you would expect Deathly and Matt to be able to win this lane pretty heavily when I think they already have a 2v2 advantage. Yeah. And uh, now that they are, were kind of gifted the two kills down there. But for now, the advantage has not really kind of uh, paid out. And Contracts is up here looking for Solo. Can he find this Camille? Level three on Contracts. Lorlo now going back into the Mininar form as well. Contracts popping a spell shield there just to make sure Solo doesn't try to turn that around on him. I like that from Contracts, considering when you are two levels under the opponent yeah. that you're ganking, you really got to be aware of how well they can turn it around. But yeah, he doesn't really get anything for that game. Yeah, not much of anything. Uh, just putting a little bit of pressure on. It's, it's not a bad try, but a solo had it warded out. does get out of there. The one thing it will give Lorlo is preferential base time, right? Because this is not a TM at Camille. He can't push you in very fast. He's not going to be able to kill the wave fast enough. So he can set up a freeze, but then that means, you know, they're, they're going to kind of trade their TPs. In this case, uh, he is going to have to be staying around for now. And Lorlo gets that early buy. Oh, yeah. And we'll try to shove this in. The Ninja Tabby, the classic response to being able to kite that opponent around, make it so that the Camille can't land those stuns on top of you, be able to chase you down very effectively. Yeah. It'll make it so Lorlo can continue just farming up, poking and harassing in this lane. Yeah, and it's going to be really good against Lyra too, right? If Jundle shows up, a lot of his damage in that early game is physical. A lot of it is auto attack based, so going to be effective there. Uh, and since Solo hasn't been able to go back to base yet, has no items, there's not really any point of Lyra trying to gank that. Uh, they're not going to have the damage to actually burst down, you know, full HP, Ninja Tabby, Gnar, this early on in the game. You can see here in the mid lane, nice little CS lead for Bevan very early on, 32 compared to 24, but... Mickey's just doing whatever he can. He's taking it slow. You can you think of Talia, you think of some of the old days back when the Q had AoE on it, and she would just shove everybody in constantly, but... Mickey is content just playing patiently, passively, underneath his turret for now, farming things up. As Lyra decides to go after the Drake here on the Trundle, he is one of the champions that can be very effective at doing this by himself and doing it early. Yeah, definitely can look to slow that down. If you get an early ocean, it is so good for a lot of these laners. I mean, Ezreal uh, sitting back, not going to be running out of mana. Solo uh, going to be harder and harder to poke out from Lorlo, giving him more all-in opportunities. And Oriana is going to love that as well. So despite the early three kills there for Golden Guardians, it is the Dragon going the way of Clutch. Mm -hmm. They are ahead in farm in some regards, and that is going to really uh, kind of help them out here. We can see, though, Contracts trying to get behind Feminine. They're looking for a kill mid. Nice ulti there on to Mickey. Featherman looking to find the solo kill here. Needs a little bit more damage and can't quite find it. Contracts will be cut off there by Lyra, who turns this into an honest 2v2. Nobody falling from either side, but that's mm -hmm. both summoner spells down for both mid laners. Yeah, big trade of spells there. Featherman hitting that shockwave, trying to get something. And solo now going to be jumped on here. Solo Pop finds back. some damage, but... It's kind of what you see from Gnar early on when he's just yeah. in this lane. He knows he's on an island. The Mega Gnar will just be thrown out whenever he finds the angle for an exactly. extra trade. And 
not really anything too special about it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a smart play from Lorlo, right? Because when you're looking at Camille, Camille is trying to all-in you when you're in mini form. That's essentially the opportunity where you're trying to go and go for that all-in. But if you keep Camille low, if you get those good Meganars out, then, you know, she can't actually look for the all-in. She can't look for that fight, uh, even when Mega does expire there. So, smart stuff from Lorlo. We'll see how he is able to handle that lane going forward. But Solo, you know, so far, uh, is up a couple farm and, you know, scaling up fairly well. And the game is, is uh, honestly normalized quite a bit and, and is fairly even. It's hard to imagine where we were just five minutes ago, Azale. <laughs> Good times back at the red buff, but it has turned into a pretty standard matchup so far after all that craziness. And Deftly and Matt will continue looking for that farm here in the bottom lane. Deftly level six now. And look at all the protection that they have around this bottom lane. Four pink wards, four clutch on the bottom side of the map. That is to kind of spot out Contracts, who should be hitting level 6 around this time. He is level 6 now, so they are trying to be cognizant of that. Uh, you can see that Apollo tried to go for the Sheen for a little bit more laning power, delaying that tier, you know, because those two kills went over to his bottom. Contracts into the mid lane now with oh, the ulti. Tries to go underneath the turret for it. Nearly dies, barely gets out of the aggro range in time. Yeah, Fevin handling that very easily. Contracts pushing pretty hard for it, going very, very deep, and you know, the damage follow-up was not in position for Mickey. Mickey, if he's out of range, he can't do anything to actually make that a kill, and Contracts doesn't have enough damage on his own, so he expends the ultimate, has to pull the flash. Fevin handles that very, very easily. And I think, I think it was you that I was having these conversations with in the office a couple weeks back about Nocturne being one of those kinds of champions in the same category as something like Skarner is, because that's the champion I equate everything to, uh -huh. is the first ultimate just feels so important. If that turns into a kill, you feel like you're on par with where you need to be in the game. Your tempo is as it should be, and you're not falling behind. But if that first ulti is a whiff, man, it feels bad. Oh, nice. I think going to be knocked up in the air, and there comes your kill. Lyra takes a bite out of him. Yeah, Mickey actually starting to really fall behind in this lane. Bevan getting quite a bit up in farm, going to be able to push this in. No TP available for Mickey. He has not had the pushing advantage, has never been able to get out of the lane and actually oh. look for an all to a side lane. So Clutch, despite the early missteps, really are starting to kind of pull ahead. You know, they're actually up in gold now, 10 minutes in. Uh, Contract's not going to have much pressure for the next couple minutes. And to talk about what you were talking about with the Nocturne a little bit more, one of the reasons it feels so important to make that first ultimate hit is that you have very little avenues uh, to pressure your opponents besides that ultimate, right? So you feel like, all right, if I, can't, if I can't get this kill, when when do I get the next kill, right? Like, when do I actually make something happen? And Nocturne is a champion that does get outscaled. When you get to those late game team fights, it's very hard to have that effectiveness if you not, are not ahead. So you really only get so many opportunities to make that happen. I mean, if you look at what he's going to be diving on as this game goes further in, let's take a look at this top lane here real quick. Instead, Seismic Shove comes out. Nice flash away from Solo there, avoiding the three-man collapse. But yeah, what as Contracts, your job is to dive either onto an Orianna, which will be able to protect herself with her own shield, her Shockwave, as well as likely a Zonia's Hourglass as the game goes on, or an Ezreal, who's going to have a Braum right next to him and who can Arcane Shift a Waver. Yeah, and he might even be building armor, right? Like, he could actually just go for that. Here's the Shockwave Whoa, combo. Oh, Contracts just deleted up there. Too far forward. Yeah, I mean, Febivin obviously wasn't there for the initial play, but then... He pushed out the wave, he roams up the top side, Contracts is still there, gets another kill for them, Solo getting that credit too. Things definitely looking good for Clutch as they're able to make their punches stick. Four kills happen in the first three minutes of the game, then in the next nine minutes of the game we get two more kills, but they both go over to Clutch Gaming, who now enjoy a 700 gold lead for themselves, and they just don't seem phased, and honestly, that's something that I think is really important for one of these teams, like we were talking about, that has had such a rough streak lately to keep their cool and make these fights work out. But they make this one work out. Apollo wants to go over the wall, does find his way to the Blast Cone. Aquo now has to somehow find his escape. Glacial Fissure gonna be thrown out there. Apollo still over the wall, shooting out those missing shots, providing covering fire, and there you go. They keep their cool, they make the escape, mm -hmm. and they don't have to give up any of their lives. As Contracts is once again going to be making a visit here into the top side. Solo looks to fight back, but it will not be enough this time as Golden Guardians find their fourth kill. Yeah, they're finally able to get that kill, but nicely handled. The pressure on the bottom side, Apollo and Hakuo survive there. Mid lane, they knock down a turret. Golden Guardian's able to trade one back on the top side, so nicely done for them, you know, shutting down Solo a bit, but they're not able to cash out on the turret and, you know, do lose more across the map. Lyra getting up there just in time to make sure he can collect some of that gold, and 
as you said, very importantly, keep the turret alive. Even though it's only standing at a little bit of HP, that's not gold given over just yet. Let's take another look at the contracts gank here. Yeah, Lorlo going in. Nice flash ultimate does get the stun, and there's no flash available on Solo because of the last three-man play topside, so really no way out for him. Once he actually gets hit by the stun, Nocturne can follow up easy peasy. So Golden Guardian's getting something going on the top side, and you, know, you do see a pretty significant farm advantage for Lorlo up in the top, thanks in part to the pressure up there, but Febvin enjoying an even bigger advantage for now in the mid lane, and that is really going to be impactful. Talking about advantages as well, I want to look at the Golden Guardian's bottom lane right now as Clutch Gaming will send four people down to this Earth Drake, but look at Defly's items. He's got the Storm Razor up on the Zaya right now. Patch 8.15, excuse me, did do quite a bit to buff some of the AD carry itemization timings yeah. to make them less costly, bring them online sooner. Storm Razor also got cheaper. 400 so gold cheaper. That one item power spike is here much earlier for Defly, and especially when you compare it to an Ezreal who doesn't have as much combat power considering he's got a Sheen, he's got a Mana Moon that's still stacking up. Yep. Definitely could be a big difference in these fights if he gets involved. Yeah, he really could. And especially when you hit that two item mark, I always feel like Zaya could be very, very strong at that point. But for now, Clutch is pushing in. And they are the ones pressuring this turret. And you can see that Noxert and Talia were kind of cheating down on the bottom side, but not going to be able to make anything happen. I think that Mickey may have actually been spotted by the Ezreal. I think it might have hit him there, uh, which could have tipped him off. I'm not positive on that, as it was just looking at the map. If you get out of this bottom lane, if you take your opponent's turret, I'm going to one-up that even a little bit. Take your opponent's turret as Ezreal Braum versus Zyra Khan when they have Nocturne and Talia and you don't get four-manned, and they started with first blood and a second kill, right? Like, they started two kills up. They started with all the cards. That is a phenomenal outcome for this laning phase for Clutch Gaming. Yeah, it really would be. And I'd like to see Apollo. I, I think this is an Iceborne Gauntlet type game. I think you just do go for some of the armor. You grab that, you grab Tabby's. And I think, you know, Mickey is not going to have a lot of access towards the back line. The people that are likely going to be hitting you is Nar, is Zaya, you know, is... Uh, this Nocturne, and that is all physical, so I think that could be a pretty strong build to go for. Mickey trying to get back to the bottom lane. They're trying to prevent this turret from going down. Uh, Clutch slowly but surely are pressuring, though. Remember, Mickey is only level 9 on this Talia. There's a level 11 Gnar in the game, level 11 Camille. The mid laner is not quite that high up yet, which means the Weaver's Wall doesn't quite have the reach. Yeah, go they, all the way into the lane. They missed actually a couple waves, you know, from that from that starting shenanigans around the red buff. So <laughs> I think that's the perfect word. Oh, here they go there. into the bot lane, Nocturne ulting in. Let's see if they can find the damage here. Heal comes out, but it's not going to be enough. Definitely goes on a killing spree, taking down Apollo. Yeah, nicely done. Contracts able to make back-to-back -back ultimates work. So the Golden Guardians getting things going on the bottom side. But will be responded to. Rift Herald already taken. Going to be dropped here by Lyra. Should be a turret trade. We'll see if Golden Guardians can knock one down on the bot side. Likely can. Almost definitely they'll be able to take this down. Plenty of power there in the items at 16 minutes into the game. Top side, Shelly will facilitate that as well. For a like second, I thought you were pulling a freak and saying definitely. Absolutely <laughs> not. I was like, wow. No. <laughs> there are some places that we don't go. There's lines you can't cross. There's, everybody's got their line in the sand, and that one's mine. <laughs> we don't go over to that other part of the beach. Right. Solo and Lyra, though, they've decided they're going to go for tier two turret here in the top side, and they honestly take it really, really easily. We'll see if Shelly gets off another charge here into the top lane. Doesn't look like it. She gets a little bit sidetracked with minions there. Killed Bonked on the head. Rip Shelly. But considering she got two turrets, I'd say she did her job. Yeah, really good job. Anytime you get one, you're like, okay, that was worth the investment of, of getting that. Anytime you get two, I think that is really above and beyond. Or Shelly putting in the overtime. Uh, and Solo has a lot of gold to base with. He is going to be very quickly on that Triforce, and that is where things can get tough. Here is the play one more time down to the bottom side. Really nice engage there from Matt, catching both. and. You know, the shift had to be used basically before the Nocturne ult came through, which means there's no uh, kind of way out there for Apollo, but he does have the Iceborne down. We'll see if he goes towards Tabby's. They did knock down the turret in the eventual 2v2, so still I would say Clutch has been successful on the bottom side of the map when you take in consideration the draft, when you take in consideration two kills that definitely started with. Apollo and Hakua I think can be pretty happy with how it all turned out.
Clutch doing a good job just in controlling the objectives of this game in general. We saw them use the Rift Herald. They've got two out of two Drakes so far, four turrets compared to one. Globally, that's a seven to one objective count, mm -hmm. which means they've just been controlling things well. I mean, Golden Guardians, for a team that has the roaming potential of a Nocturne, of a Talia, they just haven't controlled much at yeah, all. Yeah, they really haven't. And I mean, a lot of that is, is thanks in part to Fevvin, who is who is up, you know, a lot of farm, who has this early Ludens completed. He has kept Mickey pushed under his turret so much that anytime Mickey wants to roam, he's gonna lose something for it, right? You know, he, he's being punished anytime he actually steps out of that lane. So Fevvin has done a very good job with that. Lorlo will knock down that top lane turret. A lot of pressure did go from Golden Guardians up towards Solo. You know, Nocturne Ultimate, a couple three-man plays up there. Uh, Solo does have the Triforce completed, though, and this is a little bit of a scary time in the 1v1 for Lolo. Clutch Gaming moving into the enemy jungle, setting down some vision. Now you can see, even as Matt tries to walk in and put down some of his own, he's met by members of Clutch Gaming. He is forced back. Apollo finds a Mystic Shot there onto Mickey, who will just fall back, try to keep himself alive for now. Clutch Gaming won't be able to find anything else to push down here for the time being, but I don't know Guardians where's coming. the collapse. Matt definitely thinking about it. Mickey goes on a ride over the Weaver's wall. What can they find here, though? Seismic Shove not going to hit the mark just yet. Glacial Fissure now down onto Mickey. They're looking to turn this one around back onto Aqua. The Charm comes through. Damage down now onto Apollo. Stuck in the fleeing animation. Can't get himself away just yet. Does survive. Contracts falls to him. Mickey also going to be taken down here as Matt gets bit to death. And he's got no way out. Definitely now having to run away along with Lorlo. He's trying to kite this one out, but the point blank stun from Solo manages to lock him up just a little bit here. Clutch Gaming will not be able to find anyone else but it's still gonna be three for one and they can go straight to this infernal so a big ticket dragon does come up they don't want to chase forward into this meganar allowing for a potential turnaround but golden guardians likewise cannot actually come out on the map and contest this dragon 2v4 without vision so it will be another dragon going the way of clutch that is their third straight they also got the rift they have been controlling all these neutral objectives really getting ahead in that regard Third Elemental Drake, plus it's Infernal. You got the whole garage sale there in terms of those objectives, <laughs> and it feels good for Clutch Gaming. Let's take another look at how they made this team fight. Yeah, here it is one more time. Apollo has that Iceborne, so some armor in the bag to keep him a little bit safer against Contracts. Mickey going in, it is a little bit disjointed. He's in pretty early compared to when Contracts and Matt are. And Matt you know, is going actually forward on the ultimate for the Braum does connect with the charm eventually on Ezreal though. That is changed into that Nocturne Fear, but Bevan shows up, Lyric collapses on the Nocturne, and they do keep Apollo just barely safe. And then Solo comes in with the TP. Lorlo is not Mega, so the Camille is gonna be more impactful on the initial TP. Damage in the last team fight. You can see a lot being done by Mickey there. Yeah. Really 2,200 on the Talia. Honestly, not much damage in that fight there from Apollo or Fevvin. We did see Apollo just honestly running for his life for yeah. most of it, just trying to stay alive. And Fevvin was roaming down, so he didn't really have that much involvement in it. Right. But either way, Clutch gonna be really happy with the game state. They are up 3K, they have three dragons to zero, they have knocked out additional turrets. Uh, they are gonna have side lane priority. Taking a look at the items, too, here, I want to point out that we have the stopwatch still available for Fevivin, so I will keep eyes on him to see if he can use that for a good bait, make somebody stick around just a little bit too long, make Golden Guardians over-invest, or even just put Contracts in a really bad spot. Because Contracts, 1, 3, and 4 on the Nocturne, he has been a part of 5 out of 6 of the kills, but considering he's also half of his team's deaths, not exactly where he wants to be so far, especially on a champion like the Nocturne that we know as you already mentioned, is going to get outscaled. You're yeah. not just this big tanky meatball that runs in and throws down some CC and is always relevant. Yeah, it does definitely get tough in those later stages, but he has at least been pretty effective with his his ultimates after that first one. He really didn't get anything from that, but you know, able to execute on those next couple ultimates, getting a couple kills for the team, uh, definitely keeping fairly proactive. But Lyra has, has done a good job. You know, he's been in the right place at the right time on this trundle, often able to to answer you know, a lot of those plays, even if he wasn't there to counter gank Contract's ultimate, he's taking an objective, he's getting a tower, he's always doing something back, and, and that is really what you want to do as the later game jumper. Baron is now available. Clutch Gaming will clear out a little bit of vision in that top part of the river. You can see they've got wards down in the enemy jungle here as well, but you can say the same thing for Golden Guardians, who've got some wards down on the clutch side of the map, which is honestly a little bit unusual, considering they're not the ones with the tempo here in this game, but Clutch Gaming have decided to go after the Baron here for themselves. 
Golden Guardian's just now dropping that blue ward onto it. That means Clutch is going to decide to head home. We'll see how the fight breaks out here as Solo's looking to force the fight down onto Contracts. Nearly bursts him out. True Shot Barrage not going to find the mark just yet. Weaver's wall will be coming in. Does come up a little bit short there. Mickey does not want to take that one into the team by any means. Yeah, Contracts has a really nice Shroud of Darkness that Spell Shield actually blocked Solo's ultimate. So that keeps him alive there, but he is pushed out. They know he's back to base. So Clutch straight on the Baron. Contracts hurt. That means there's no chance for a 50-50 just yet. TP gonna be used though. Golden Guardians wanting to stop this one. Clutch says we're going for it. We're looking to secure this. Lyra does get the smite. And now they'll look to see if they can maybe turn things around. Lyra knocked up into the air. Not gonna be taken down just Contracts yet. Contracts almost in range. Him alive. Contracts may want to ult here, but again, you gotta be careful. It's five members strong from Clutch Gaming. You can't just run in there alone and they won't go for it. Baron, over to Clutch. Yeah, really well done. They get the Baron, they get out Clutch in full control of this game. Now they have the side lane pressure with the Camille. They have the Baron buff to actually help that out here too. So Clutch is gonna be in such a strong position. Really have kind of gotten through most of the weak parts of the game. And now you're gonna be able to force Golden Guardians to come to you. You're gonna be able to force them to engage uh, and take these five man fights because that Baron buff becomes so difficult to wave clear against. Muramana fully evolved. Most of the Blade of the Ruined King completed for Apollo as well. Becoming very, very strong here on this Ezreal. We'll see exactly how Clutch can execute with this Baron so far. Like you said, Camille in the side lane is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Febivan also getting the bottom lane shoved out here just to make sure they've got as much pressure as possible. A little bit over two minutes left on the Baron buff. They've still got two tier two turrets to take. And when you have Baron like this, when you have this amount of a lead, it's pretty easy to force those down and just sort of take them by force. Take them by force. Like yeah, it definitely is. And you can see that they're trying to push in all three lanes. Baron buffed it up. Alira may be caught. That's not really the guy you want to look Thank to catch, though. It's very, very hard to really even try to burst him down. Didn't even have to use the subjugate to get himself out of that one. Ultimate still available means Clutch Gaming is ready for a fight if Golden Guardian puts to take it. Or are they damaged down onto the front line and Lyra is eliminated instantly. Matt gonna keep the carries away as Hawk will also nearly taken out now. Lorlo wants to find some more control onto those carries now potentially as Hawk will go so into the, the stopwatch. Apollo buying time on this one. It's too dead on the side of Clutch, but it's all about making sure Solo can get that inhibitor. It looks like a win for Golden Guardians. If you're counting Counting the players alive, it is, but the amount of pressure that they have means Inhib goes down top. Yeah, Bevan Apollo cannot be caught there. Bevan still held on to the shockwave, so making it very hard to engage into him. Golden Guardian is trying to collapse, trying to get a pick here, but Bevan and Apollo playing this pretty safe. And it is Solo who knocks down the inhibitor, who knocks down the inhibitor turret. They still have a minute on that Baron as well. Febivan and Apollo just doing such a good job staying alive on these carries as we'll see if they can get this next Drake for themselves free and clear. It shouldn't be any sort of an issue. Solo will just continue being annoying there in the mid lane, standing close enough to power up those minions until rotating over to make sure he facilitates his team also getting this Drake. And if this game goes long enough, this could be a five elemental Drake game for Clutch Gaming as we take another look at how Lyra got caught here. Yeah, they jump on Lyra, but it was a really good early stone play from him, actually negating a lot of that seismic shove damage coming through from Mickey. He's the one who actually ends up forcing Matt to flash out, but Golden Guardian says, we have five men here. They are splitting. We need to engage. I think it is a fairly good engage. Contracts goes forward. Matt actually ends up charming up all four members in the eventual play, yeah. so really good recon play from him. But it's Apollo and Bevvin just kiting backwards. Good ball placement here from Bevvin. That ice born from Apollo, slowing them up, allowing him to kite this out, playing it slowly, made it too hard for Golden Guardians to actually collapse and finish off those last members. I mean, Solo gets the inhibitor top. And the chain CC there on Delira was so effectively done, he never got to use Subjugate. He died with the ultimate still available, likely thinking, okay, I'll pop it on whoever I need to to make sure we burst them down. But unfortunately for him, it was not done fast enough. Clutch Gaming still enjoying that 5,000 gold lead, clearing vision through the enemy jungle, pushing up once more. This team fighting so desperately to stay alive. Remember what's on the line here. Whichever team loses this, your playoff aspirations end here. 
Solo will continue yeah. pushing up onto the tier two, takes that one pretty effortlessly. And there you go, all the tier twos now down Azale. The next objective for Clutch is that base of Golden Guardians. And you have to remember, for Golden Guardians, they would then be zero and seven in the second half. Only two games remaining to pick up a final win here. And Clutch is tied with them for last place. This is supposed to be, you know, one of those games that is winnable. And, and Golden Guardians were given three kills to start the game. They had the advantages at the, the outstar, but it's been clutched through a lot of, I think, superior laning that has really uh, gained edges for themselves where you wouldn't have expected it. You know, you don't expect a Braum Ezreal to be beating a Zyra Rakan who starts with two kills. You don't expect Bethlehem to be so far ahead in the farm in that 1v1. Superior laning and just shutting down opponent win conditions. Like you already praised Lyra for being in the right place at the right time. It's so much more apparent and it's so much more important up against the roaming potential. I've yeah. said it before, I'm saying it again right now. Nocturne and Talia, in a game where you see this comp executed exactly the way that it was drafted for, these two are roaming together as a duo. They're making things happen bottom. They're taking objectives. They're securing things for the team. And it just wasn't a possibility this time around for the Golden Guardian. Nice shockwave. Shockwave onto two. Contract can be removed from this fight almost instantly. But Apollo is deleted and definitely goes unstoppable. Yeah, really nice seismic shove there. It looked like from Mickey, I think, catching Apollo. So him and Deftly just pop Apollo after Bevan had a beautiful shockwave to start things off. Golden Guardians buy themselves some time with that kill. They will push Clutch back to base. So nice stuff around the base there from Mickey and, and Deftly getting themselves a kill. Let's see it one more time. We'll see if that was, in fact, that seismic shove. But if Bevan you know, catches a couple of them here with the shockwave, the spell shield, I think, Maybe got broken by the Q or the W there. I'm not actually positive, but Spell Shield did get broken from contracts. He gets caught there, and Apollo just gets absolutely lit up and burst down. Yeah, the Easter Predator replay really showing off exactly how a good fight can sometimes go bad. Mm -hmm. Even if that Shockwave starts things off on the right foot, if the follow-up isn't quite there, if you just get a little overzealous with that positioning on the Ezreal, the punish is very real. And that also showcases his ale. Golden Guardians, despite being down, are not out of this game. If you give Deftly some firing time, he'll put up the numbers. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, that's just what I was going to talk about. Clutch obviously are in full control of this game, but you still have a five kill Zaya on the other team with a completed IE sitting on those three full items. This guy is going to put out some monstrous damage, and they have the setup, right? They have good engage with the Rakan, with the Nocturne. If Gnar can actually you know, connect and get some of those big ultimates, Certainly there is the potential for, for Deathly to be able to knock down all those touch gaming members and turn this game around. And I also really like Executioner's Calling against Trundle, against Camille with Ravenous Hydra. The healing stoppage is just so huge. I will never stop pointing this out. I will never stop praising players for doing this because if your opponents are healing and you're not building Grievous Wounds, you goof, you messed up. <laughs> You bonked yourself. You definitely did, man. I mean, it's 800 gold for something that is effectively thousands of damage, potentially, in a team fight, right? You know, Trundle's ultimate is huge. Here they go, though, trying to get Solo. Let's see if Solo can outplay this one. But five versus one is not normally a situation. You've got the Let's ability to outplay, but he will buy as much time as he can there with the stopwatch saying, OK, team, it's five on me. Go for the Baron if you can. TP going to be used here. They want to come into the pit. They want to stop this one. Nice job from Hakuo stopping Mickey early from the wall. Red team's able to find the Baron. And they get out. Trying to get himself away now. Clutch Gaming have to try to get out with this one. Contract with a good spell shield to block up the shockwave. Apollo having to get himself out now too. Blade of the Ruin King buying the extra time, getting him the extra speed. Bevan gets himself out of the way of the fear tether. Hakuo's the sacrificial lamp for that one, but it's still going to be a one for one trade. Apollo looking to stay alive. Lolo still trying to chase him down, able to find the wallop. But Lyra will find the kill onto him. Will be picked up now by the Guardian Angel as Golden Guardians will look for yet another kill here. Stoneplate going to be used. Lyra trying to buy even more time. Pillar thrown out, keeping himself away here. Matt tanks up the turret. They can't go any further. It's Baron over to Clutch Gaming, but they lose 3-4. Yeah, and the full play, they kill off Solo. It is 3-for-1. They get the Baron. This is your Acer Predator replay. Clutch Gaming decide to make the call to commit to the play. They know that the jungler is not going to be there in time. They get the smite from Lyra, a really good smite from him, and they are able to finish it off. But again, the fights break out on the top side. This time it's Golden Guardians who may have overstayed their welcome. A nice uppercut kick from Solo make sure that Lorlo's not getting himself out of this one. And Matt will shortly join him a double kill for the top lane. Yeah, nicely done there. Solo is getting so, so strong on this Camille. Three items already completed. He is well on his way to having that GA there as well. 
Uh, so that is looking good for them. The fifth dragon that you had spoken about earlier is on the map, but I think with two members down, they just want to pressure the base. They have the Baron buff still. They are looking to knock down at least two inhibitors here. Siege up mid, have Camille on that open and hip top, and I think Clutch has a really good shot. I'm gonna put I mean, last nails in the coffin. They're still far enough ahead that you can always take the Drake in the open ground afterwards when you don't have this man advantage. These 15 seconds are so important to take that double in hit, which they'll do now just ever so effortlessly. Golden Guardians can do nothing but stand and wait for those objectives to fall. And now Clutch Gaming heads out. Now there's nothing else to do. All right, we'll pick up the Lizard on our way out. Yeah, they're going to get that fifth dragon. Here it is one more time. Up on the top side, Matt and Lorlo. Really slow bases. They wanted to try to push that up all the way, but Solo TPs in. He has the home guards. Going to be able to find himself a couple of easy kills here. Nicely done from him. Greed is a deadly sin, Azale. <laughs> Golden Guardians learned that one the hard way. Of which we are both guilty. I've seen us both play League of Legends. We have both definitely greeted out for it before. <laughs> no one is innocent here. But bottom lane, we'll see if Clutch Gaming can now secure themselves the final inhibitor. It is such a difficult position to defend from for Golden Guardians. Golden Guardians looking for the engage from the bush, though they need something to work. Uh, they did back off as we get vision of that, but it has to be a great engage. They cannot sit back. If you sit back, the super minions will crush you out. You, have no time. you will lose the third inhibitor. The game will end. Their only chance is hard engage on one side or the other immediately and try to stop Clutch from getting this triple inhib. The minions themselves are just going to destroy the turret, and now Clutch yeah. can force the fight without that extra structure, without that extra damage. The inhibitor itself under fire. If Golden Guardians let this go. go, it's going to be so hard to come back now. Featherman going to be jumped on contract. He's going to find the damage. Man with a big charm on to multiple people as Lyra goes into the front line. Look at the zone. The Guardians away. The root comes through. The feathers fly out. Definitely keeping himself alive for now. Still has ulti ready to go. Tries to run down Apollo, but can't quite find just enough damage. Solo wants to go in, and he's found the Killing spree on the bat as contracts will be number two. Lyra grabs that kill, and there's two dead on the side of the Golden Guardians. Five alive for Clutch Gaming. Golden Guardians will do everything they can to hold these Nexus turrets, but it's not going to be enough. Clutch Gaming will cut them down. Solo goes into Resurrection. Guardian Angel doing its job on that one. Clutch continues looking for the push, continues looking for the win. The turrets are out of the way. The Nexus is taken low, and Clutch Gaming find the win. And they're gonna keep their playoff hopes alive. Flowers, they're moving one step closer to that potential playoff berth. They are still gonna need some help from uh, some friends or some enemies, however you wanna look at it, but they are still alive. And with that, Golden Guardians are now knocked out of playoffs. Clutch, you have to give them a lot of credit from that game. The level one was insane. They gave up three kills, two of them, including the first blood, onto the Zaya Rakan lane on that marksman. You would expect the game to fall apart from there, but they played so damn well. They were stable, they were strong, their laning really carried them through a lot of this game. And you're talking about bottom lane too, but it was that top lane, the lane that we were so happy to see them draft the aggressive lane, the counter pick with the Camille being able to play aggressively. That was the lane that lost its tier two turret first. Solo seemed like he was constantly in charge of that side lane situation. Yeah. And then when both those side lanes win, well, Featherman can't just allow them to have all the fun. He has to go up 30 CS in the mid lane, nearly solo kill Mickey, and just completely shut down to Leah's roam potential. Clutch showed that on an individual level, they could outplay Golden Guardians this game, and they deserved the win for that alone. Yeah, really the case. And, and I also do think that they deserve some credit from that draft. You know, we've talked so much about counter picks. It's been such a big focus over these last couple of weeks. And and they were able to go for the Camille, not just kind of handshaking into a losing matchup in the NAR. I think if you do grab a tank there and you're losing on the top side of the map, then the game looks very different. But Solo always had pressure on the map. When the four-man squad was getting engaged on the bot side, he gets the inhibitor. He's always kind of creating that pressure. And, you know, you always have that side lane threat. So definitely a lot of credit deserved by Clutch for this game. And we're giving Clutch a lot of praise. We're saying, man. Clutch had everything together, but there was one big point in the game, Azil. There was one point where Clutch didn't quite have things together. Let's take it back to level one. Yeah, and I mean, there's a lot to kind of unpack here. This was like a three minute fight at level one where, you know, Lyra is even in mid at this point. This is this is like a minute <laughs> into the fight. This has already been going on for a while. Lyra walks over to mid, pushes that wave in a bit. Then he's coming back down. And Clutch, you know, had been kind of getting poked out, had been getting the lower end of the HP. You can see that uh, Deathly had actually gone back to lane. He now returns back to this fight, and Lyra flashing forward does not have enough damage to go for the kill. And Deathly flanking on the level one Zaya, flashes in, gets Akuo, 
gets Lyra. They do trade back one kill, but it is three for one. It is two kills, including the first blood on the Zaya. And in most games, you would look at that and you would say, all right, that's the game, right? If you go if, next. If that's a scrim, I think they, they actually just say, okay, remake, right? You know, Golden because Guardians won because they started three to one. It yeah. looks so bad. Two kills on a winning bottom lane. Didn't, didn't pan out at all. There's just, I think.